David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another review. Today I have for you the latest release from Allegory Goods, which is a new leather pen storage product called the Reliquary. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this interesting storage option, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it, uh, as well as show you how it functions and what pens do and do not fit. Spoiler alert, there's not that many that do not fit, so that's a good thing. Thanks go out to Allegory Goods for providing the two cases you will see today for review. Uh, Allegory has been around since 2012 and is based out of Chicago, Illinois. It's run by the husband and wife team of Chad and Jess Shoemaker. Uh, the story goes that they were both working for a startup company which went out of business and they were looking for some uh, creative ways to get by while they were both job hunting. Uh, Chad's father had taken up woodworking and made a few pens, so that gave Chad an idea. Um, he found a few pieces of wood with interesting stories and crafted some pens. Uh, eventually, they branched out into creating leather goods as well. Um, I've previously reviewed a number of their items, which I care for a great deal. Um, this pad folio here is something that I have carried around with me on a daily basis for almost five years. And other than the uh, leather gaining some character, there really isn't a single sign of significant wear or tear on this. Uh, they do a really great job of making quality products which will last for a long, long time. Uh, and also I believe they have a lifelong warranty on their products. So if anything does go wrong, they'll fix it for you. Uh, so. What have they come up with this time? Uh, in order to take a look, please join me over here at camera two. This is the Allegory Reliquary. Uh, a reliquary is a container or a shrine where sacred relics are kept. And those of us in this hobby certainly treat our pens as if they are sacred relics. Um, it comes in two different sizes. Uh, there is the A5, which is this one here, which holds 14 pens, and the A4, which holds up to 27. Um, I'll show you a picture of the A4 in a little bit, uh, but just because it fits better in the frame, let's first focus here on the A4. Each of these are made with heirloom quality Ecuadorian Latigo leather. Uh, Latigo leather is both durable and pliable. It's also very soft. Um, during the treatment process, it's infused with a high amount of oils, making it resistant to moisture and sweat, which is really helpful for something you carry around with you. Um, a lot of leather goods are made using what's called splits. Uh, they're very thin pieces of hide that could be sewn like cloth. Uh, this is an example shown in the launch video. Uh, while using splits lower production costs, they also lower the quality and durability of products. Um, Allegory uses what they call four and a half ounce leather, which you can see here is significantly thicker than splits. These cases come in three different colors. There is saddle, coffee, and charcoal. And then let's actually take a look at this. Um, first of all, the seaming is really nice on these pens. Um, and we have a nice zipper, which is a plastic zipper. And then when you open it up, we have a few things going on here. Um, over here on the left hand side, we have an area for 14 pins. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no, I mean, it was 14 pins overall, but nine pins over here and then five over here. Uh, and then we also have a slot here, which could be used for a notebook. And I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, one of the things I really like about this is that this is all one piece of elastic. So it's not individual strips. So that if you have like a really large pen, it can be, a, you can accommodate it here uh, and make this loops a little bit larger or a little bit smaller if you want. Um, I just thought that was a, a nice innovative design. I hadn't seen that previously. And then over here on this side, we have spot. We have five spots for significantly larger pens that uh, are that basically uh, fit down in there. And since it's tapered, then they will hold. Um, I find that it, it's very well made and well organized. So let's take a look at some pens and see what actually fits in here. Let's start off from smallest to largest. This is always a quiz if, if I can remember the names of all of my pens. This right here is a Lilliput. You can see that that fits in there very nicely. Uh, and then right next to it, we have a Caveco Skyline Sport, and that fits in there as well. 
Uh, then we have a Mont Blanc Skywalker, and this is in uh, matte black, or actually it's ultra black is what this is. The next few pens are ones that uh, are in my review queue right now, and so you'll see reviews of these coming up in the fairly near future. Um, we also have a new pen from Shown Design, and this is the one with the Monarch nib. Uh, I'm really looking forward to playing with this one more. Let's actually switch this. We'll go in order. The Monarch nib fits right up in here. Then the next one we have is a pen from Rockster. Um, I've reviewed one of their pens previously, but this is the latest one that I purchased. I just love this uh, infused resin. I just think that it's really cool. It's a maple burr, and that fits in there nicely. Then next up, we have a pen from Visconti, which is their Mirage Mythos, which I think has some really nice uh, resin on there and is basically their entry-level model. After that, we have this really cool resin from Pens by Pascale. Uh, again, I need to review that coming up in the near future. This was something that I picked up a while ago. Then I have something new from Narwhal, which is their Ikaku. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is basically uh, their venture into a higher end model for Narwhal with some ni really nice uh, rotten there uh, and some sparkles as well. Um, again, I'm looking forward to taking a closer look at that one. It just arrived this week. And then finally, just one of the longer pens I have, which is this Franklin Christoph Model 66, which was my project that I did with the Jonathan Brooks resin a while ago. So you can see that all of those fit in there nicely, and it accommodates thicker and thinner pens. And even when we finally got down here to the very end, the, uh, the elastic wasn't very tight. Okay, let's take a look at the larger slots. Uh, and, you know, I always get emails. I've gotten several emails from folks that have always asked, like, hey, I have an emperor, and what pen case can I use for this? Because there's a lot of pen cases which will not hold an emperor. But you know what? Guess what? This one holds it just fine. Uh, it tucks down in there, and it's not going anywhere. And there's plenty of room here at the top, so it's not hitting the... Uh, uh, it's not hitting the zipper, and this is uh, soft and plastic, so I wouldn't uh, really be that concerned if it was touching it a little bit, but it fits in here just fine. Now, I will say that you are not putting something like uh, this uh, uh, Lilliput in here, that it's going to get lost if you put it in one of these large slots. It might be difficult to get out of there. Um, I think I put one of them in here, and it just uh, you, you couldn't get it out of here. It just took a while to actually kind of force it up, so you just want to be careful Careful that you're not putting super small pens in here. Though what you could do is if you had a smaller pen with a clip, you could actually clip it onto the top. So if you have one with a clip, it will work fine. But if you have a non-clip smaller pen, you want to, I'd say you want to keep it out of this side of the case. Um, here's one of the largest pens I have in my collection, which is the Danny Trio Genkai. And again, that fits in there perfectly well. Um, here is a Collier Grande, and that goes in here fine, either with the clip or without the clip. Um, this is a very large pen from Pentio, and that works in there. And then finally, here we have a Matthew Martin, and this is the Chonk, or the OG Chonk. And that fits in there nicely as well. So you can see that it holds uh, this amount of pens really nicely. And you can fold this over. And I don't feel like any of the pens are banging up against each other and that they're all protected. I don't feel like uh, any of them are at risk for getting, uh, getting hurt or damaged. Now, there is the ability to put an A5 notebook in here. And what happens is it slips in over on this side, if I can get it in here right, and it slips in. Now, there's an obvious problem in here. You'll see that it's really not meant to be used when you have pens over here. Uh, and then also, once the, um, once the pens are out, it can be a bit of a bumpy writing surface with the elastic on here. It's my understanding that they are going to offer an insert, kind of something that can slip inside this pocket and then you can slip it inside the notebook and it creates a, a more uh, firm writing surface for when you're writing. 
I don't think that that's going to be necessarily useful when you have pens in here. So pretty much when you have a notebook in here, you either only want to have one pen in here you're taking out to use uh, or nothing in here. So it's uh, that that's just a kind of a, a different way of using this notebook and a different thing that's available. Here's a quick look at the A4 sized. Uh, you can see here, I have it filled with just about every Pilot Pen in my collection, and it fits everything very nicely. Uh, you can see even the smaller pens that I have that are uh, attached with the clip in the larger area. And this one also holds an A4 notebook in it as well. Okay, this project is going to be launched on the BackerKit website. Um, I admit I wasn't as familiar with BackerKit as opposed to Kickstarter, but after some research, it is one of the more popular project-based management sites. Um, it's pretty equivalent to Kickstarter, and uh, Allegory has said they're going to go back and forth between it and Kickstarter and uh, see which works better for them for their business. Um, in regard to price uh, for the project, which is going to be open for a short period of time, I don't have the exact dates right now, but just know that when this launches, the project will be open. And I believe the intention was that it was only going to be open for a or maybe a week or two. Uh, during that time, during the project, the A5 is going to be $99. Um, after the project is finished, once it hits their Allegory's website, it's going to be 119 I think 99 is reasonable for this particular um, piece. Even the 119 is a decent price. Uh, for the A4, uh, the project price is going to be $124, and then that's going to go up to $149 once it hits their website. So... There we have the Allegory Reliquary. Um, I was really pleased with this product. Now this is not gonna be like an everyday carry for me. I'm not needing to carry this many pens around with me on a daily basis, but when I'm going to a pen meetup or going to pen club or going to a pen show, this is definitely something I would bring with me. I think it shows off the pens nicely uh, as well as protects them. So, uh, you know, I was happy to see a nice quality piece of uh, leather good here from Allegory. I'll put a link in the notes below where you can find this project on the Backer Kit website. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.